Previously on Ultimate Spider-Man, 20 years ago, the Maker prevented a radioactive spider from biting a young Peter Parker. The Maker either killed this world's heroes or prevented their origin stories with a goal to rule this earth from the shadows. He gave domains to different supervillains to rule this world under his watchful eye, so to defeat Maker. Tony Stark, the Iron Man, starts to make his own team, the Avengers, and returning the powers of all those heroes who were targeted by the Maker. Now two months ago, Peter Parker, now a married father of two, allowed a radioactive spider to bite him after Tony Stark gave him a special suit, the radioactive spider, and warnings of the Maker's Council. Since then, Peter is using his incredible powers to find the truth, while his Uncle Ben begins his own journalism with his friend J. Jonah Jameson. After leaving their previous company, the corrupted Daily Bugle, which is owned by Wilson Fisk, and to take down Fisk, there is one vigilante patrolling the city every night, destroying Kingpin's properties one by one, and he is Green Goblin. But in case of Peter, the sudden increased strength and power make him difficult to control. He also get confronted by Shocker, but he lost the fight not once but two times. Not only that, Peter's daughter, May Parker, has also discovered Peter's secret identity and she decides to keep it secret. But with one condition, she will make her dad a perfect costume. Welcome to Comics TV YouTube channel. In today's video, we will review Chapter 3 of Ultimate Spider-Man. You can get the previous parts on this playlist. So if you guys are new here, Please subscribe and turn on all the notifications to never miss any future uploads. Please like, comment and share. All the text and images are owned by its suspected company. You can support them by purchasing it digitally or from any offline stores. The issue opens up in Parker's residence. MJ and her son, Richard, are going for a shopping as Richard needs a new shoe and after that, they will visit the florist. But for quite some days, they notice Peter and May are acting strange. They are avoiding eye contact and the two believe both Peter and his daughter are up to something. So MJ asks them what is going on. So Peter replies, nothing, and it means the simple enjoyment of some solid daddy-daughter time. Maybe MJ and Richard are up to something and they are deflecting it. So MJ tells Peter they will come back within an hour and before leaving the house, she reminds them, don't do anything stupid. But Peter and May have a plan, they head to rooftop. As today, they are going to select a perfect suit for Peter. So Peter goes with his iconic black costume, but May refuses it as it looks scary. Then a Ben Riley suit, but May tells her dad he is too old for this. Then a similar version of 2099, but it is missing waves and also blues. And then another suit of superior Spider-Man. And finally Peter settles down on the iconic red and blue costume. And by wearing this, Peter takes his daughter for a ride. Meanwhile, Jameson and Ben found their new office and they still don't have a name. And this place is a complete trash as with their money, they can only afford this and it is good for them. And with zero employees, Jameson tells Ben this is how they control their expenses. But still, this is a good start. And then, Peter shows up at that new office and he brings a gift from MJ to liven up this place. So while talking about the office and its expenses, Peter sees a map. He asks about it, but both Jameson and Ben are hesitant as Peter is currently working at the Bugle and they don't want any trouble, but they know Peter is a good guy. So Jameson asks him about the current situation in the Bugle. As he hears, there is a chatter going on inside the Bugle about a guy wearing green suit waging a personal war on the Fisk organization. So Peter confirms it is true that green guy has already blown out a lot of stuff. Robbie is calling this dude the Green Goblin and he thinks this is a good story. But the heads of the Bugle keep shutting down Robbie. Instead, they are pushing stories about the new guy in the black suit. And Peter believes that that guy is extremely photogenic, a more charming character, a real man of the people. They look at the map. Every location the goblin has hit, they are all owned by Fisk. So Peter asks them, what is the story between Fisk and the green guy? Is he good or bad? So Ben tells Peter, they don't know yet. After all, this is the real world, not a fairy tale. So it is better if they don't jump to any conclusions. So maybe they should find out more about this green guy. 
So like the other days, Peter goes on patrolling. He has seen on the TV. The heroes just sit there, waiting for the bad guys. And when they come, the heroes defeat them. But it is kind of boring. There is nothing to do. Watch, eat, and repeat the same. It's been two days, and Peter wishes something would happen. But then he quits. He believes this was a terrible idea. Nothing is going to happen. And he is cursing himself, Ben, and Jonah for chasing after that green guy. He is about to leave the place. But then he hears something. Several explosions. The green goblin is chasing a criminal, throwing his pumpkin bombs. But nothing is working against the villain, Bullseye. Goblin tries his best to take out the criminal and he believes in a bit of Wilson Fisk. But Bullseye tells him Fisk is a prop, a puppet like everyone else. He works for the real masters of this world, the real power. He is paid by the invisible hand to strike down those who forget their station. And it is time to meet the end. Bullseye proceeds to kill the goblin with his little weapon. But from behind, Spidey shows up and waves up his hand. And seeing him, Bullseye tells him it is his lucky day as he is going to eliminate two problems at once. He throws his cards at Spider-Man, which he dodges. But Bullseye reminds him his target wasn't him. And right at that time, the whole construction place begins to break down to pieces and it falls on Spidey. Goblin gets his opening and hits Bullseye in the back. But he has had enough and he takes down Goblin and proceeds to claim his victory. But Goblin tells him this is a real shame. A predator like him not realizing a trap even though he walked right into it. And before Bullseye can realize the danger, Spidey shows up and one-shots Bullseye with a powerful punch. The fight is over now. Peter asks him, what will they do next? Should they call police? He hasn't actually caught anyone before. So Goblin tells him, Fisk owns a large part of the police. And this guy is connected to Fisk. So the cops will not help them. So the only option is to capture these criminals and send them to Goblin's own personal location. He also gives a compliment to Spidey's costume. And he tells Peter, it is a proprietary take. And he presses something on his chest. And Peter's suit starts pairing with Goblin's. Peter tries to cancel it, but nothing is working and it reveals Peter's face. So in replies, Goblin also reveals his face and it is Harry Osborn, late Norman Osborn's son. They introduce each other and Harry tells Peter, this world is strange, dangerous place. Peter also agrees and for a moment, they look at each other and Harry asks Peter for a drink and talk about things. So Peter agrees and in this world, Spider-Man and Green Goblin become friends and they are working together to take down Wilson Fix and save their world from the maker. And with that, the chapter 3 of Ultimate Spider-Man comes to a close. So which part you like the most, please share them on the comment section down below and please like this video and do subscribe as this will motivate me to make more contents. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe and I will see you guys in the next one, bye.